Finance Friday. We're back here live. Yes. Finance Friday with uh, Finance Friday Frank. Uh, say hello, uh, Mr. Uh, Francisco. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, there he is. Hold on. Wait there. Live and in gotta person. Get those. He's live and in person. That's right. Holy moly. Uh, so we're here on Friday talking about finances, talking about your wealth, talking about the things that make you money or not. Uh, we're not financial advisors. Frank is, but uh, I'm not. But not on the show. We're just going to be talking about your money and how we um, help you, help us, help each other, and uh, build a better economy. <laughs> yeah, Livelihood, well, maybe, at least uh, your own economy, right? Maybe not the U.S. <laughs> economy, but your own personal economy. We definitely want to help you out. Um, reach out to us, uh, answer, ask any questions. We'd love to help you out. Yeah, we're here uh, again on, on Facebook and on uh, YouTube. So if you um, like what you're seeing, go and hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button because we love it when you watch us watch you. If you're on Facebook, give us the little heart emojis because we love the loves. So we're here on a Friday, again, talking about the things that are important to all of us. And, and money is one of those things that's very important to a lot of people. Wouldn't you say, senor? Well, um, <laughs> yes, oh, it, it, it is. Uh, I mean... Is it different we, being in studio? We, we, <laughs> it is, actually. Oh, sure. But it's good. You know, I wanted to come because I wanted to let people know that I'm not a robo-advisor. I'm a real advisor. <laughs> you know, you talk to me, you're talking to a live person, you're talking to, uh, you know, somebody who can uh, relate and stuff like that. And so, yeah. You do, you do look like Noob Cybot on your uh, home cam, by the way. I have no idea. Noob Cybot. Mortal Kombat, man. <laughs> oh, okay. The, the, the dark guy in the show. I just know the original ones, dude. Give me Sub-Zero. Give me, uh, you know, Scorpion. Stuff. Those, those, those Noob Cybot ones. is supposed to be the dead Sub-Zero. Oh, yeah. Like See, he that, came that, back and... That's you know. too new for me. Right? I, I just know that. <laughs> that was like the third <laughs> Mortal Kombat, you know? Um, but anyway, here on Friday, talking about finances and uh, just a number of things that came up, um, I think, in the last week. The big thing is crypto. You know, people kind of get into that game and wondering, you know, what that's all about. We get a lot of questions regarding crypto because it's, it's, I think it's the topical nuance. You know, it's the thing that people are... It's on the news. People are talking about it all the time. And nobody really knows anything about, but everybody seems to have something going on with it, <laughs> which yeah, is kind of crazy. Yeah, you know, it's crazy because it's like um, now crypto is the topic of conversation. You know, yeah. it, it's like, it's just a minor, not, it's not even an asset class. Again, we can kind of debate on whether it's a, it's a legitimate asset class or not, but it's just a minor thing in the whole economy, yeah. you know, versus stocks, versus bonds, especially and things like that. It's just a, a, a minor little uh, part of the market, yet it, it's all the conversation. You know, it's like now that's what's driving even the stock market. You know, now people yeah. look at, at at cryptocurrency to maybe make some decisions about stocks. So yeah, it's been it, it has a life of its own for sure. Yeah, and um, take a look at Bitcoin. So I I didn't I didn't really look at Bitcoin today. I, it's been taking some. It's been very volatile. I'm gonna go put that on the screen since uh, we're talking about it. Um, so Bitcoin on here, I don't know, Frank, can you see that? I can see that. My huge screen, yes, I can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm going to pull the, the full uh, full screen. So the last, I want to say the last uh, several days, I mean, we've been looking at uh, the six-month chart. Uh, let's go three months or six months. Uh, let me pull this down a little bit. So uh, en enormous volatility over these last few days. I mean, it just it just shot down roughly about what 50, 60 percent, and then uh, kicked back up. I think yesterday. Um, where are we at? That's today is the twenty nah, first. Um, it's taking a hit today too. And we're at thirty six thousand. I think it climbed up all the way to about you know uh, on the it peak was like about 63, 60. 64, something like that. Yeah. So yeah, people that got in in their fifties and the fifty fives and the sixty range, well, they're taking a hit right now. But there's a yeah. lot of people that got in a lot earlier. Uh, but yeah, it, I mean, I mentioned this before. It's just <laughs> a very volatile thing. Yeah. Um, to me, I consider it still very speculative, and I think you know there there is a value there as 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 it gets more mainstream yeah. uh you know as it becomes a little an, an asset class maybe a diversifier against you know stocks different from gold different from other things uh it can have uh, some sort of value right uh, a, 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 like a rational value something that it is but well people give it value I yeah, mean, I mean, but but the, but the value is two components, right? Yeah. There's the like like any in stocks and bonds and anything really in real estate. There's the you know the intrinsic value, you know something that yeah this is kind of what it's really worth, which is very very hard to determine. 
Uh, but then there's also the speculative value. Like how much of that value that is in there is just speculative speculation. Look at real estate too. Yeah. You know, like a real estate, yeah, a home is, is, is obviously it's valuable. There's some intrinsic value you get. You know, you, you, it's, a, it's a place to stay and, yeah. and, and it appreciates and stuff like that. But more recently, now you're starting to see a lot of speculation in that too, right? So how much of a home right now where the people are buying and paying for is, is speculative and how much of it is really the intrinsic value of the home based on, you know, what it gives you. Yeah, right? and I think people are tied up in what the physical aspect because I can, I can hold a dollar bill. <clears throat> I can't hold a Bitcoin. <laughs> right. You know, and, and that's what I think is not, it's, a, it's an asset class because other people give it value, but again, there's nothing tangible necessarily about it. Yeah. And then you can just mine it from nowhere. <laughs> right. You know, it's, uh, so it's, it, it is kind of a weird thing to get into, but because people know about it, because people find it of value, it, it gets traded. Just and, and that's essentially what a fiat currency is. It's, it's not connected to anything, but you can touch a dollar. You can't touch a Bitcoin. Well, I think, you know, more than the, the physical, because there's a lot of economies that are that are considering taking their currencies digital. Right. And, you know, I know, I know China is considering it. Maybe, oh, yeah, even, the, that, yeah. maybe even the U.S., you know, that they're considering it. They're probably not saying much about it. But so it doesn't really have to be a physical thing. What, what it has to be, though, it, it, you know, is those things that the, the currency requires. It's a store of value, you know, and to me, Bitcoin does not have that yet. I mean, imagine the dollar plunging, you know, 30 percent or 35 percent like it did mid, mid week, you know, in, in just a few hours yeah. because of what somebody said, because Musk said something and China did something this, you know, that's not really a store of value yet. So, um, yeah, it's just missing a couple of components, I think. Well, and and obviously the government is um, I would like to, the China government is going to be doing its own crypto. I think they have their own crypto at this point. Right. And so the idea is that they they have control over it. And the right. whole the whole essence of what Bitcoin is, is it's uncontrollable. People don't it's not restricted. It's not uh, uh, governed by any kind of body, any kind of governing body, you know, yeah. and as it becomes more, you know, uh, profound in our, you know, economic base or people start trading on it our government's going to intervene at some point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll, sh I'll show an article real quick yes. so you see that. So on, on here, um, you'll see the U.S. Treasury calls for stricter crypto cryptocurrency compliance with the IRS says to impose tax uh, evasion risks. So people are right. trading this stuff and not, and you know, had not paying taxes on it. Um, but now they're looking at imposing that. Now they're looking at, um, uh, from my understanding, a government Bitcoin, <laughs> you know, a yeah. different, different currency that's, that is secure, not the dollar. Right. Well, um, so two things, really. So go, going back to what, you know, currency is, basically yeah. it's, it's something that people keep the dollar and, 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 and own the dollar and things like that because they believe in the U.S. government, right? Or whatever currency you're, you know, you believe in the European Union or, or China or whatever it is. Um, with, with Bitcoin, yeah. because there is no central figure around it, it's just, you know, you're believing in something else, right? Uh, you're believing that it's just going to go higher because other people are going to are gonna think the same way. So that's kind of yeah. the thing. But then, yeah, I mean, obviously the uh, government, uh, so the government uh, wants, uh, wants to tax you, on any, uh, tax you on any income that you get, right? Oh, yeah. I, I, I mean, so, <laughs> Everything. So, 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 I mean, it, it, I mean it, in, uh, in real life, so basically if you sell something for a gain, if you sell your car for a gain, you buy something, you sell something for a gain, you're supposed to report that income. Yeah. And not a lot of people do. Obviously, you know, they, they, they're, you know, buying and selling stuff and, and things like that. They're personal items. But even personal items that you sell for a gain are, are supposed to be declared as income on your tax returns and stuff like that. I mean, good luck for the government trying to find that out, right? You know, if you sold your, you know, a little collectible you had out there for a gain. But, by offer uh, up. By offer up is going crazy right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not reporting anything. Yeah, oh. but, <laughs> Just but I mean, with, with, with Bitcoin, I mean, you're talking a lot of serious money, right? You're talking, yeah. you know, people that, you know, they're putting in $10,000. Uh, they put in a couple of years ago, and now those are worth a couple hundred thousand dollars. That's serious money. Those are serious gains, you know, and now, now the government wants a piece of it. So. But it, it's crazy the reach because there's no necessarily a country connected to Bitcoin. And so now um, my understanding, again, is like China is putting restrictions on that, you know, forbidding people to even trade or sell or anything with it. So yeah. that, it's, it's, it's crazy to me. And, and as we go along, I mean, we're here talking about finance we're talking about the economy, talking about different things that we're here to help. You know, Frank, right. uh, Frank is a, a financial planner, advisor. Yes. And uh, just not on the show today. We're, we're, we're purely here for entertainment. 
Yeah. But if you want to look at his services later on, he's he's available, and you can, guys can contact him. But if you have any questions or comments on the show today about anything you're seeing, we'll, we'll take them here live and answer them as we go along. Yes, for sure. Uh, we're love still continuing to build the show. Yeah, <laughs> we would love to help, uh, whether it's just a general question about market outlook or anything like that, or something a little bit more personal. I can't give you, you know, very yeah. specific advice, but I could at least, you know, say a couple of general points to consider for sure. Absolutely. I, I go to him all the time for different <laughs> things. So uh, I didn't want to lead off. Um, I got my car broken into this week. Okay. And yeah. uh, there, there is a reason I'm mentioning that because the, the person that, that broke it, they, they didn't really like, I, I think I left my door open. <laughs> I mean, I'm just stupid enough to <laughs> I leave do. the door open. I do that all the time. I should say leave it unlocked. Okay, and yeah, and yeah, I think right. somebody came along with just checking doorknobs and wow. like, oh, shit, this one's open. Let me go pilfer through all his stuff. And so he ended up, you know, or whoever. It could be a girl, too. Most uh -huh. likely it's a guy, statistically. But. Right. Uh, so whoever it was ended up stealing my baseball cap, my sunglasses. I had a headset in there, you know, one of the headsets we use here. So I had a headset that was broken. I was going to exchange it. And then a, a case, like a little iPad case. Okay. And he stole all that stuff, went through all my stuff. It was really annoying. Left the door, you know, propped open. And it's like, oh, shit. But what I did notice he left the change. Oh, really? He wasn't no, interested in some money, huh? There was like, there were, so there was, there was like, a, I have this little silver piece. It's an ounce of silver, pure silver. Oh, wow. Um, just sitting there. It's, it's like, a, like a token. A, a client gave it to me, and they said, hey, you know what? Um, this is pure silver. It's brought me luck here. You know, take it. And I'm like, oh, you know. And so that was still there. The quarters and a, few, a little bit of the change was still there. Wow. And so I... <laughs> You know, anecdotally, I mean, is that is that a reflection on our economy where where our money doesn't even is not even valuable anymore, just sitting there resting <laughs> for yeah, somebody to I take mean, and they absolutely just leave it behind? <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, it, it, oh, it's, it's uh, they're getting it from somewhere else, right? The government is going to give them something, uh, whether it's an unemployment benefit or uh, another stimulus or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's another thing. We keep getting stimmies. You know, I got uh, two more letters saying I'm going to get my stimulus. Okay. Um, the, the, so the the I think a couple shows back I explained that I had a, a three thousand dollars stimulus right. come in. Uh, it was a, a refund. They finally sent me a letter. Two months later, they sent me a letter saying, "Oh well, we made some changes. We made some changes to your ten forty W. So we're gonna go and send you a thirty one hundred dollars." Oh wow, very nice. I thought it was a stimulus. I was getting pissed off. I'm like, more <laughs> money out there. <laughs> as much as it is nice to get money from the government, like money from heaven, it does not help. I think overall. You know, uh, and it's really the the, the emotions and, and coaching people uh, that money isn't free. You have to work for it. You have to build your business. You have to build however you obtain that money. It's not just given. Right. Um, and the idea, I think, behind the stimulus is that you go out and spend more money. But we're not we're not spending money. Uh, no. Let me go uh, something real quick. Right. I mean, so basically, a lot of people that what, what they're doing. <laughs> I actually read an article earlier. Um, yeah, that they're paying off their debts. You know, they're paying off their credit cards. <laughs> for a lot of people, um, they've done, you know, they've paid off their credit cards with, with so much help from the government. And yeah. so now they're trying to figure out what to do, what, what else to pay off next, right? Whether it's a student yeah. loan or the home mortgage or something like that. So, yeah, it's um, money's coming in and people are, are not spending it. They're using it to, to pay down debt, which is, I mean, from a financial advisor perspective, that's, you know, <laughs> that's a good decision, right? I mean, if you're saving it, then, <laughs> then, then it's good. But that's not what the government wants, right? No, the no, they want you. It. They want you to go out there spending money. So right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull up this other screen. So money velocity is one of those things that's a marker, in and showing that we're using, you know, money and and it's going out there. So basically, every time I spend a dollar, every time I, I pay Frank to financially advise me, right? Um, and yes, I we have to pay him because <laughs> that's how we get financial advice yeah. around here. Not on the show because we're just you know entertainers, but. Uh, <laughs> Um, velocity money. So I give Frank for money for service. I give him a dollar. He takes that dollar and goes and spends it somewhere else. Uh, he orders a Uber to get home from the show today. And then that Uber driver goes and spends that dollar on lunch. And so the, the money turnover is what, what is considered velocity. So when, when you come to the, the velocity money M2 money stock, you can see that we're not spending money and it's been on a decline essentially since what, 1998 ish. It right. just the velocity money just continues to go down. We're not spending money up until we get to the point here where we're just just flatlining. It's just we're not spending the money that the government wants us to spend, you know. And so obviously what the outcome of a stimulus is, is not being transferred or at least translated to what it's intended for. Right. So, you know, you can have an opinion about like what that means and how that how you feel about that. But at the end of the day, we're we're putting out money and it's not being spent. 
Uh. Yeah, right. Um, and, and it's again, it's uh, when we do spend it, though, I mean, we already have inflation now. And yeah. so when we do spend it, when people decide, I think, you know, people are still just scared, you know, yeah. they're scared about you know, um, probably the pandemic still kind of, you know, in, impacting yeah. certain parts of the economy and stuff like that. It is surprising, actually. To me, it's surprising that, you know, because uh, as for the stock market recovered very quickly after the pandemic, you know, you had a, a, a tough last March and April. But after that, you yeah. know, it, just, it was it was a boom. And so um, I'm, I'm surprised that our people are still holding that that into money or holding money that for that long. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, think about it. I mean, <laughs> you're stuck in a house. I mean, and you're buying stuff on Amazon. Right, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, what, what else are you doing? And the funny thing is I'm going out now and I went out to dinner and I think, um, uh, was it Taco Tuesday? Uh, the bill was like 65 bucks. Oh, wow. And I'm like, well, it was just a couple of, ta- well, okay. We went to a bougie taco place, uh, you know, yeah. Violet's kind of bougie. Okay. You know, she she has issues when I spend a dollar on a bottle of water, uh-huh. but then is fine spending 150 bucks on a bottle of wine. I, I she knows that. I mean, I've told her that. Before. Right. <laughs> those, they, those are those are values. You know, that's what she values. So uh, we still haven't opened that wine, by the way. We're <laughs> saving it for whatever day. <laughs> but um, so you know, we went out and spent 65 dollars, and when I got the bill, it's like, fuck, I don't want to. That's a big bill. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm 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 used to like eating at home. Uh-huh. I'm used to like buying a couple tacos from whatever backyard taco and spending like twelve bucks. Right. And then you go to some bougie place and the food wasn't that great. I, I don't want to mention the place, but the food wasn't that great. And then spending sixty five dollars, like uh, maybe maybe it isn't worth coming out anymore. And I think a lot of people are like that right now. Uh, yeah. I mean, for for sure. I mean, I, we see it too in, in our family. You know, I have two yeah. kids, and so as far, party of four. You know, we're not spending less than 70, 80 bucks each time. You know, yeah. sometimes over a hundred or something like that. And so, and these are not like the super fancy restaurants that we're going to. They're all middle, you know, kind of middle of the road things. Yeah. And yeah, you're spending seventy, hundred bucks. So I can see, yeah. And that's so a lot of money. And then on top of it, everything's increasing in prices. We talked right. about the Whopper before, but right. I've noticed Chipotle, they just they did their cauliflower rice. And yes, I'm long on Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Chipotle. But they came out with their cauliflower rice, and that was like $2 extra on the burrito. Oh, really? I'm like, I think I could buy a head of cauliflower for two bucks. <laughs> but, but everything's going up, and it's just it's just hard to really negotiate. And I think coming from this, this pandemic shutdown, to where we're saving money, not spending it out there. You might go buy some Grubhub and stuff or whatever you got when you were at home, but when you actually start getting out there and then you're like, okay, so I got my bill for 65 bucks. Right. And then it's like, okay, well, I got to tip the server. And I'm like, shit, do I go? She was pretty good. Do I really go the full 20 or right. do I do somewhere in between? And then by the time you leave, you're like 80, 80 bucks later and you're like, it wasn't worth it. Yeah. yeah. And so it puts, it puts uh, I guess, uh, a, a bad taste in your mouth. When you're spending that money again, and I'm finally, we're finally down to a place where we paid off most of our debt. I think Violet's just got one credit card, something left, mm-hmm. and it's like I don't ever want to give it back into that. So now we're just kind of hoarding money, and I think I'm just like everybody else, putting money into stocks. <laughs> right. I'm like, I'm like, which stock am I going to next? You know, and uh, I'm not getting on Robinhood um, because I, I did you hear about some of the volatility with Robinhood this week? Uh, I actually didn't. That one, I, I, I skipped that one. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm scanning all over the place, and that one I skipped. So, so like, uh, with Robinhood and Coinbase, those those are two platforms that people are trading on for these cryptos right. and for, like, you know, these um, these options and everything else that they're kind of negotiating on those platforms. But uh, Coinbase shut down this week, you know, uh, in the in the midst of, like, the, the crypto. So Bitcoin did a big sell-off mm-hmm. on, what, uh, Wednesday or Thursday. Wednesday, right, I think it was Wednesday. And um, uh, it was Coinbase that put the stop hold in it. Their, their system crashed down. And it was very reminiscent of the Robinhood crash. Oh, right. You know, and Robinhood's kind of, you know, managed. So what it did is it revealed, you know, kind of who the hidden person behind the curtain is. Right. You know, we talked about Citadel controlling the Robinhood and being the, the, the backer of where all that funds come from. Mm-hmm. And when they put a stop payment on, on a trade, you know, is that ethical? Is that legal? Um, is it not allowing for markets to adjust? I mean, there's this there's this whole cloud of like uh, manipulation, I believe, and it's and it's people are just drawn to this this quick casino of the wall of the market right now. Yeah, it is crazy how money just moves, you know, in and out of things yeah. so fast. You know, people are rushing into Bitcoin, people are rushing out of Bitcoin, and, and, and yeah, I mean, 
there's a lot of uh, I, I mean unfortunately there's a lot of a lot of inexperienced people um, that are just you know the FOMO yeah, yeah. you know it's just FOMO and so they're just kind of going with the herd and so I can see why the government might want to protect some of those people because you know a lot of this stuff is not transparent yeah. and a lot of this stuff is just hard to understand and so I guess they do need a uh, some sort of protection, but then yeah, then you start interfering with markets yeah. and really trying to find the markets what the true price is, and so now you get you know. And that's and, and that's what happened I think with Bitcoin this week. We're starting to reveal kind of what the truer aspects of that. You have a certain segment of people that are just just diehard Bitcoin, gonna live and die by the coin, and and you have people who actually work off fundamentals and can manipulate the system. Bigger entities than us. Right. You know, and it, 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 it's so hard. And we've talked about this before. It's so hard to, like, come into the office or go talk to a friend. And they're like, hey, guess what? Look what I did. You know, and they show you. And like, oh, man, I made I made 500 bucks today. And you're like, shit, how did you do that? <laughs> yeah, if I had 500, I could just go buy whatever tires. I can go pay off whatever bill I needed to real yeah, quick. Right. And it's like, well, what, what, what did you put it in? Yeah. Oh, man, Dogecoin, man. I'm long, hard in Dogecoin. Ethereum. Oh, Ethereum. and there's like all these other coins, and it's like I don't really know. And I'd, I'd rather put. I, I've been hesitant about the whole cryptos anyway, just because it's uh, again, it's not tangible. Right. And I know other people are too. And and it's like, well, where do I go? I, I like my Vanguard. You know, the reason I like my Vanguard is it kind of puts you on hold a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You know, you go put it a trade. You see, like I, I watch. Um, I'm on uh, Yahoo and then uh, Trade View. And you see some of these stocks start trading at a lower price, and then you're, you're like, "Oh shit!" Uh, like Palantir, Palantir is trading at like 18 bucks a share, and I'm like, "Oh shit, I better go buy." So I'm running over there to put my buy order in, uh -huh. and then Rob, uh, the Vanguard is just like, oop, 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 oop. "It's still showing 20 bucks." I'm like, "No, it's it's showing over here on 18." I'm like, "So I have to wait," you know. So it kind of decreases that kind of excitement, I guess, you know, and it but it puts in the order when you put it in. And you can you can put you can put in your limits and stuff too, right. but it's mm -hmm. like I, I want to order it now. I'm seeing it, I'm seeing it over here at 18, but you're saying 20. It's like catch up. Wow. Uh, so that's that's the part I like about Vanguard. <laughs> the yeah. the the part I don't like is just like hey, if I want that trade, I want it now. <laughs> okay. All and that right. that prevents that a little bit. Yeah, you know, I, probably the system that we use is kind of what you know, yeah. institutional, so we get to you know do the market price, the yeah. current market price, but they might put a little. Uh, a little buffer there for individual investors, I guess. I'm not sure, to be honest with you, but uh, yeah, I and can that, see that. Happen. And, and that's the benefit of having fiduciary, too. Like, like I can call you and and be like, hey, Frank, I want to put an order for whatever. And then you can be like, uh, are you sure you want to? Like, you have that kind of hesitation because you're trying to look over my best interest. And you're not necessarily, like, yeah. you're not jumping into it. And you, you kind of like that stopgap. You know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, for, for me, anyway. <laughs> no, yeah, for, for, for a lot of things, really. Um, yeah. Yeah, so basically one, one, of, one of the things is trying to have a plan, an investment plan, right, of not just jumping into in, into in and out of things. Um, you know, having a plan of why you're doing things, what, what you're investing in and why. Yeah. Uh, but then also, you know, dealing with the emotions, you know, when the market does, uh, does tank or something like that, you know, you have somebody there to yeah. kind of put things in perspective. This money is for your retirement, so it doesn't matter if it's down 10% you know, in the last couple of weeks. You know, this is money you're not going to touch in 30 years. Um, yep. And so, yeah, definitely you want some uh, some third party activity on that. So um, as we get along, we're at the and tail end. We're uh, going to wow. be on for another about five minutes or so. And we're just talking about the market and some of the economy. A large part of was uh, our discussion today was about crypto and kind of what's going on. But uh, at the end of the day, what we keep coming back to what, what Frank and I keep reverting back to is the emotions in this market and um, and the volatility based on those emotions. This market is more based on emotions than really it is fundamentals or just anything logical. I mean, cryptos is a good example of that. I mean, right. people are just blowing it up to the moon. You know, Elon Musk gets on there and says, hey, I'm going to let's let's have a big sell off or have a big buy a buy off. And then it rockets the price up to 60 grand. And then right. then he goes and sells it off and says, oh, well, I had to sell it. You know, and then it just the mark, the, the stock just tanks after that. Yeah, you know, there's so many manipulators out there and they're trying to get you to buy in because they're pushing up their price. Yeah, I mean, um, again, going back to the intrinsic value of something, um, yeah. you know, you try to find, for example, for stocks, you know, what a lot of professionals use and you know, the people that kind of 
value these things. If you go to uh, you know a big bank, they'll have an analyst that says the value of Apple or Cisco or something is this. They'll probably use like a discounted cash flow model. Uh, and yeah. even those are hard to do, you know, those are very hard to do, you know, but they have their, all their assumptions. There's these spreadsheets are crazy, crazy spreadsheets. But anyways, they use this model, right? And they yeah. try to get the intrinsic value. And uh, for something like uh, cryptocurrencies or something like that, it's a lot harder to do because there, there is no cash flows, right? It's just, you know, based on emotions, a lot of it. But, but yeah, and the, but a lot of things get mispriced. Uh, in the short run. In the short yeah. run, uh, I'm a big believer that things get mispriced. And that's why you see these spikes, ups and downs. Those are emotions, right? There's a value there. Apple has a value there. All the companies have some sort of value. Yeah, yeah. But they're going to overshoot to the up and to the down. It's only in the long run that you start seeing, you know, that you know that trend line is kind of what that value is. But it's, it's always going to be, short term is going to be uh, driven a lot by emotion. Yeah. And that's what we try to avoid with our clients because we don't mess with that. You know, there's, it, doesn't, yeah. it, it doesn't pay. Um, you can get it right once. You can you can say you know I bought at the right time and I sold at the right time. You can get it right you know a couple times, but to do that over and over and over consistently for years and years and years, it's it's just close to impossible. So we don't mess with that. Yeah. Well, that's good to know too. <laughs> so uh, we're basically at the end of the show today. Um, if you had any comments or questions, even even after, you know, you can go and put those in the in the drop box below. Is there any takeaways from this week or that you want to you know share with everybody here, Senor Francaello, before uh, we head out? Well, I think you know, uh, just real quick. <laughs> Especially the stock market, you're starting to see a little bit more. You know, we did have a couple of, of, of bigger down days. And yeah. in the last month, uh, I think it's been the last four or five weeks, that you're starting to see those kind of bigger price movements down, bigger price movements up. Again, there are things that are starting to overshoot here a, a little bit. Uh, but it, it, you especially saw that in, in, in crypto, right, is that not everything goes up forever, you know, and people were, were under, under this FOMO thing, if yeah. you know, I could have bought it at, you know, 35, and but I'm going to buy it at 55, and now we, they're down to 30-something. And so um, I, I would say, again, the importance of having an investment game plan, of uh, being strategic, strategic with your investments and yeah. being intentional and not just following the herd. Because the herd, who knows what they're doing? Who knows what, how, how much, you know, liquidity they need versus your needs. And, you know, we're all different. We're all in different stages of how much money we earn, how much money we save, how much money and stuff. And so you need to make it specific to you and not just be following the herd. Yeah, and I think we're at a time, we're at an an epiphany point where the market's correcting. And we've put all this money in and it's it's in housing, it's everything else. Because on Mondays we do the uh, Monday Market 15, which we talk about, you know, the housing market. And uh, people like even myself, I'm, I'm well qualified, I have enough money, and I'm being priced out of this market. At some point, it's got to take a correction. You know, at some point, everything has to adjust back to where it's at. Uh, and the people that threw all their money in, it's going to be taken by the people that know the system better than, the, than, than we do. Yeah. Uh, that, that have bigger, bigger hands <laughs> to move yeah. that money than we can. So, um, and then my other piece of advice is don't get emotional and lock your car door because that <laughs> sucked this week. <laughs> it's, you know, it's not even, it's not even the fact that somebody broke in. It's the fact that it's so uncomfortable, uh, to go in your car and know that somebody else is in there. And I'm like, and then, and then on top of it, because of COVID it's like, well, fuck, did they have COVID? <laughs> what did they touch? You know, did he, did he have like a booger and like go through my, my, did he use my mask to wipe uh, his no. nose? I'm like, yep. it's just these like, are, these are probably not the uh, uh, upstanding <laughs> citizens, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's all those things like lock your car door. I mean, so uh, we're going to be uh, coming at next week, talking about yes. all these questions and things. Uh, I'm, Frank is in the uh, in the in the studio this week. I'm happy, right. yeah, which, yeah. which which will be kind of an ongoing thing, and hopefully yeah, more I, so. Yeah, I, I plan to be here uh, as much as I can. Sometimes, you know, get got a busy day, won't be able to, but yeah, I'll, I'll be here as much as I can. All right, sir. So everybody there, if you have any questions, go ahead and put you. them in there. Hit those likes, hit that subscribe, and then uh, we'll see you guys next week. Bye bye. <laughs>